long time ago, there lived a king and queen who said every day, if only we had a child. But for a long time, they had none. It fell out once, as the queen was bathing, that a frog crept out of the water onto the land and said to her, Your wish shall be fulfilled. Before a year has passed, you shall bring a daughter into the world. The frog's words came true. The queen had a little girl who was so beautiful that the king could not contain himself for joy and prepared a great feast. He invited not only his relations, friends, and acquaintances, but the fairies in order that they might be favorably and kindly disposed towards the child. There were 13 of them in the kingdom, but as the king had only 12 golden plates for them to eat from, one of the fairies had to stay at home. The feast was held with all splendor, and when it came to an end, the fairies all presented the child with a magic gift. One gave her virtue, another beauty, a third riches, and so on, with everything in the world that she could wish for. When eleven of the fairies had said their say, the thirteenth suddenly appeared. She wanted to revenge herself for not having been invited. Without greeting anyone, or even glancing at the company, she called out in a loud voice, The princess shall prick herself with a distaff in her fifteenth year, and shall fall down dead. And without another word, she turned and left the hall. Everyone was terror-struck, but the twelfth fairy, whose wish was still unspoken, stepped forward. She could not cancel the curse, but could only soften it, so she said, It shall not be death, but a deep sleep lasting a hundred years, into which your daughter shall fall. The king was so anxious to guard his dear child from the misfortune that he sent out a command that all the distaffs in the whole kingdom should be burned. As time went on, all of the promises of the fairies came true. The princess grew up so beautiful, modest, kind, and clever that everyone who saw her could not but love her. Now it happened that on the very day when she was 15 years old, the king and queen were away from home, and the princess was left quite alone in the castle. She wandered about over the whole place, looking at rooms and halls as she pleased, and at last came to an old tower. She ascended a narrow, winding staircase and reached a little door. A rusty key was sticking in the lock, and when she turned it, the door flew open. In a little room sat an old woman with the spindle spinning her flax busily. Good day, Granny, said the princess. What are you doing? I am spinning, said the old woman, and nodded her head. What is the thing that whirls round so merrily? asked the princess. And she took the spindle and tried to spin too. But she scarcely touched it before the curse was fulfilled, and she pricked her finger with the spindle. The instant she felt the prick, she fell upon the bed which was standing near, and lay still in a deep sleep which spread over the whole castle. The king and queen, who had just come home and had stepped into the hall, went to sleep, and all their courtiers with them. The horses went to sleep in the stable, and the dogs in the yard. The doves on the roof, the flies on the wall. Yes, even the fire flickering on the hearth grew still and went to sleep, and the roast meat stopped crackling. The cook, who was pulling the scullion's hair because he had made some mistake, let him go and went to sleep. The wind dropped, and on the trees in the front of the castle, not a leaf stirred. But round the castle, a hedge of briar roses began to grow up. Every year it grew higher, till at last it surrounded the whole castle, so that nothing could be seen of it, not even the flags on the roof. But there was a legend in the land about the lovely sleeping briar rose, as the king's daughter was called. And from time to time, princes came and tried to force a way through the hedge into the castle. They found it impossible, for the thorns, as though they had hands, held them fast, and the princes remained caught in the middle without being able to free themselves, and so died a miserable death. After many, many years, a prince came again to the country and heard an old man tell of the castle which stood behind the briar hedge, in which a most beautiful maiden called Briar Rose had been asleep for the last hundred years, and with her slept the king, queen, and all her courtiers. He knew also from his grandfather that many princes had already come and sought to pierce through the briar hedge, and had remained caught in it and died a sad death. Then the young prince said, I am not afraid. I am determined to go and look upon the lovely briar rose. The good old man did all in his power to dissuade him, but the prince would not listen to his words. Now, however, 
the hundred years were just ended, and the day had come when Briar Rose was to wake up again. When the prince approached the briar hedge, it was in blossom, and was covered with beautiful large flowers, which made way for him of their own accord, and let him pass unharmed, and then closed up again into a hedge behind him. In the courtyard he saw the horses, and brindled hounds lying asleep. On the roof sat the doves with their heads under their wings, and when he went into the house, the flies were asleep on the walls, and near the throne lay the king and queen. In the kitchen was the cook, with his hand raised as though about to strike the scullion, and the maid sat with the black fowl in her lap, which she was about to pluck. He went on further, and all was so still that he could hear his own breathing. At last he reached the tower, and opened the door into the little room where Briar Rose was asleep. There she lay, looking so beautiful that he could not take his eyes off her. He bent down and gave her a kiss. As he touched her, Briar Rose opened her eyes and looked lovingly at him. Then they went down together, and the king woke up, and the queen, and all the courtiers, and looked at each other with astonished eyes. The horses in the stable stood up and shook themselves. The hounds leaped about and wagged their tails. The doves on the roof lifted their heads from under their wings, looked round, and flew into the fields. The flies on the wall began to crawl again. The fire in the kitchen roused itself and blazed up and cooked the food. The meat began to crackle, and the cook boxed the scullion's ears so soundly that he screamed aloud while the maid finished plucking the fowl. Then the wedding of the prince and Briar Rose was celebrated with all splendor, and they lived happily till they died. <laughs>